solving nonlinear systems of equations. Given any system of equations, the point of intersection are the real solutions. Look at the diagrams below. How many solutions do you see for each system? One solution, two solution, or no real solutions? Pause and try. So the first and third have two real solutions. That fourth one only had one real solution. And the second one had no real solutions because the two graphs never intersect. Keep in mind with different systems of equations and different functions, we can have even more solutions. Now let's graph a system. We see the first one is a parabola, quadratic. Well, it's in standard form, so I know the y-intercept immediately. It's at zero, negative one. Next, we'll need to get the vertex. Do we remember? Let's find that average of the two x-intercepts. So x equals negative b divided by 2a. We see that the x-coordinate of the vertex is one. Now all I need to do is plug in and find the y-coordinate. Now that I have the y-intercept vertex, I can use symmetry to plot a third point and graph the quadratic. Now let's graph the line. We see that the y-intercept there is also negative one, zero, negative one. Slope is negative two, so from the y-intercept, I'll go down two and then to the right one. It appears the only place that they intersect is at the y-intercepts, which we knew they shared. So one real solution, zero, negative one. Let's graph the next one. Pause, graph, and determine how many solutions you see in the next system. In example B, we see two real solutions. One is at that y-intercept again, but where is the other one? Let's go back to our parabola and the vertex. It has not been vertically stretched or compressed, so I can just use the basic pattern points. Over three, up nine. That happens to be where the line is intersecting the parabola at the point five, three. How many solutions will example C have? Pause the video, try it yourself, check your answer. Wow, quite a bit of fraction work there to get our vertex, but fortunately they intersected at that reflected y-intercept point, three negative one. Is graphing our best method? Not always, so let's look at how to solve these algebraically. Solving nonlinear systems by substitution. Looking at this first system, we have the second equation solved for y. So let's substitute that into the first equation for y. After I plug in, I can distribute my negative and simplify, leaving me with a quadratic equation. Well, how do we solve quadratics? We should always try to factor them first. So zero product property, gotta get everything to one side, so it equals zero. Looks like this factors into x plus three, x minus one equals zero. All right, what are my solutions then? x equals negative three, x equals positive one. But is that a solution to a nonlinear system? No, those would be the intersection points. So I need to plug X back in as negative three and positive one to get my Y values. My two real solutions to this nonlinear system are negative three, seven and one, three. To solve by substitution on this next one, what's the first thing we need to do? Yeah, subtract two X on that second equation. So we have Y equals. Then take a moment to substitute that into your first equation and set up your quadratic. With that quadratic equation, I can use crisscross and factor into x plus six, x minus two. Using zero product property, I get x equals negative six and x equals positive two. Plug those back in to find my y's and I have my two real solutions to this nonlinear system. If we look at that last substitution problem, we could have done it with elimination. The y's would have added out right away. Now let's try elimination on this next example. Once again, the y's are going to add out immediately. Once the y's are eliminated, we need to set the equation equal to zero and then determine which method we need to use to solve. Will this one factor? And we could use completing the square, but this might be best with quadratic formula. How 
many real solutions? None. Look at it graphically. The two parabolas never intersect. However, we can clean this up and give imaginary solutions. Last example. Once again, the y's eliminate very nicely. So go ahead and solve the quadratic equation. 4x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. Well, I kind of checked if I could factor that, and it didn't factor nicely. So it looks like a quadratic formula problem. However, can I use completing the square? Yes, I just have to make sure that a equals 1. So in this situation, I noticed it would be not too difficult to divide out a 4 from all terms, including the equals 0. Remember, you're only allowed to do this if it's an equation, and you divide it out of all terms on both sides. So now let's set up for completing the square. Subtract the 1 half, move it over. Now decide what do we need to add to both sides. Let's look at those binomials. Well, half of b is 1 half, so I would have x minus a half times x minus a half. Negative 1 half times negative 1 half is positive 1 fourth. I just need to add 1 fourth to both sides. That wasn't too bad. Now all we need to do is square root both sides and finish solving for x. Once we square root both sides, remember that we have plus minus. But then that square root of negative 1 fourth, we just square root the numerator. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root the denominator, square root of 4 is 2. The last thing we need to do is add the 1 half, move it over. So our final answer is x equals 1 half plus or minus i divided by 2. This is a problem that worked out nicely using completing the square. We kind of had to make it work though. Quadratic formula would have been a lot more work. So just start paying attention. Are there times when completing the square would be a better option? Solving. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to do it that way. <laughs>